Hello everyone, my name is Jordan, but if you know me from SoundCloud, you know me as Scraps. If you know me from old Xbox Live, I would be the dude of Halo 2. Anyways, today we're going to be learning this nasty lead patch. In this nasty lead patch, there is a lot of source routing, there is a lot of equalizer, modulation, and a little bit of merging. So here in a minute, I'm going to give you an example of C2 all the way to C3 of the notes and the types of sounds you can get with this patch. So sit back, relax, and have a listen. So that's the patch we're going to be making today. Let me close this over here. All right. So, oh, oh yeah, okay. <laughs> so right now, I'm gonna go up to Reasons Options. I'm gonna File and New. I'm gonna drag up the rack. I'm gonna drag down the sequencer so we have a little bit more to see. In this, I'm going to Control click and go to utilities and create combinator. Now there are two ways to create the combinator. If you have a PC mouse what you can do is you can right click and it will give you all the options for the instruments, the creative effects, studio effects, and utilities. Or you can do control click if you're on a Mac or PC this works on both. You can get that same menu. So right now I'm gonna click my combinator and inside this combinator, you can see a red line. In between the red line and the blue line of the combinator, or inside that space, I'm going to click and right click or control click and create a new instance of Thor. Right now, I'm going to guide you through the making of this patch, uh, and then we'll, we won't have to worry about anything else. So, uh, for the range, we're going to take this down to 2. For the polyphony, we want to take that to 4 and change it to mono legato. Mono legato stands for one note at a time, meaning that if I take C3 and go to D3, it's going to pitch up to that key. And I can do that in reverse, so I can hit D and then... C2. It, it's pretty important. I should also let you guys know to turn on this dim negative 20. So that way when you play keys, it won't... When you play your instrument, you won't blow your monitors, also known as speakers. And it's at a nice range to where you can listen to and still be able to perform in your instruments. Okay, so right now I'm going to click this button that says Show Programmer. And in this patch, if we open it up, we can see that there's not a whole lot going on. Although there's a lot of buttons and knobs, what we actually want to do is um, make it so that way instead of getting this, we get something like this. So, I'm going to guide you. So for the first oscillator, I'm going to turn that off. We don't need it. For the second oscillator and the third oscillator, we're going to make an FM pair, or frequency modulated pair. For our second and third oscillator, I'm actually going to change the FM amount to 93, or as close as you can get it, 92, sometimes 94, just as close. I'm also going to change um, for both oscillators the oscillate for octave. I'm going to change it to octave 2 for both of these. That's all we really need to do for that for the oscillators right now. I'm going to take off for the routing for our first filter. I'm going to take that off. I'm going to take number 1 because we're not using it. I'm going to turn on 2 and 3. 
And for filter two, I'm gonna turn on three. And make sure that this button is switched on so that way, whatever comes out of filter two, it can route to the filter three that goes into the output of this synth. Okay, so right now, I'm gonna change the filter of filter frequency one, change it to 260 hertz, turn the drive up to 92, and change it to 24 type one. Let me zoom in so you can see that, 24 type one. For filter two, I'm actually going to change this to a state variable. And I'm going to take it about 576 hertz, turn up the drive to 71, and turn it to high pass filter. We do not need to mess with the inverted drive signal or the low pass high pass envelope. I'm sorry, did I say drive? I meant the envelope. Anyways, for our LFO, one, we're going to change the rate to almost 6, so about 6.01. That's pretty close to 6, so I'm just going to leave it as, as at that. Turn up the keyboard full amount to 6, and turn on filter 3 as a combinator. Now, for the combinator filter, for filter 3, I'm going to turn on the negative mode for combinator. I want to change it to about 576 hertz, turn up the damage to 75, and that should do it for that. Okay, so for our filter and our amp, what we need to do is have the exact same parameters um, for our filter and our amp. So right now, I'm going to do the amp first. I'm going to turn up the decay all the way to 180 seconds. Turn the sustain all the way up, so we want to copy that. There we go. And for the release, we're going to take it to about 180 milliseconds. So that way when we play a key, we get a nicer, uh, we get a nicer finish instead of a hard cutoff. So it decays much smoother. Okay. So now that we have everything in place, I think, oh, actually we don't have everything in place. We actually need to go to filter two and change it to waveform five. It's a random waveform, but it's a smooth random waveform. And of being super chunky and going to the next highest note like this, it kind of glides to the next note, but it does it in such a way that it's a little bit random. So you have signed smooth connected waveforms. That's waveform number five. So I'm going to guide you through our source cabinet. I'm gonna choose all the destinations for the source and then we will mess around with the amount and destination. So let's get to it. For our source one, we're gonna choose LFO one. For our second source, we're going to choose our voice key note full range. For our next slot after that, we're going to choose LFO2. Then after that, we're going to choose our modifiers. We're going to choose button 1. After that, we're going to choose in our modifiers button 2. Oh, and I don't know if I explained this, but for our keynote, we're going to choose voice key and then note full range. For our modifiers, we go to modifiers and then button one, then button two and modifiers. And modifiers, again, for the next slot, we're going to rotary one. And then after that, rotary two found in modifiers. And then finally, for our last source, we want to choose performance and go to mod wheel. Okay, now that we have everything for our source, we're gonna change the amount and destination. So for our first source, LFO1, we're gonna change the amount to 50. The destination will be oscillator one pitch. We're gonna change the amount to 97. And for the scale, it's gonna go to our performance mod wheel. So for our second lane, we're going to, our first lane, we don't need to mess around with the amount or the scale anymore. So after this, we're going to go to our keynote, 
and we're going to change it to negative 81 by clicking, holding, and dragging down. For the destination, we want to go to AMP, and we want to go to Gain. For LFO2, we want this to be 12, our amount to be 12. And it's going to be rounded to oscillator 1 pitch. For button 1, we're going to change it to 47. Although, actually for button 1, turn it to 100. And we're going to turn this to our delay, dry wet. Even though it's not on, it will, when we do turn it on, it's going to create a much wider sound. And this will determine how much of the wet dry goes into that. For button 2, turn it to 100% and do chorus dry wet. For rotary 1 and rotary 2 and mod wheel, for all three of those parameters we want it to be 100%. For rotary 1, we want our filter frequency 1 to be modulated. For rotary 2, we want our filter frequency found on filter 2. For our mod wheel, we want LFO1 rate. Now if we have a listen. We're pretty close. So we don't need to mess with any of the Thor's patch anymore. We can actually self-contain this and save it. But I'm actually going to go a little bit further and show you what else we can add to this patch to make it a little bit more gritty and able to use in our songs. So I'm going to control click and go to Studio Effects, go to RV7000, take the dry wet to about 20 and leave the decay where it is. Then after this, I'm going to go to Studio Effects, go to Line 6 Bass Amp and turn on the compressor. After this, if you have rack and extensions installed, I currently use Reason 6.5. But if you're using Reason 6 or lower, if you're using lower than Reason 6.5, then I would suggest you skip this step. So, I'm going to go to Studio Effects, go to Soft Tube Saturation, and turn it up to 0.7. After this, I'm going to Control Click, go to Creative Effects, go to Screen 4 Distortion. I want to change the damage control to 40 change the type to tube, turn P2 all the way up, and turn P1 about 82. Make sure the body is on, make sure it's body type B, turn auto to 2, turn scale to 4, and turn the resonance about 10. After this we want to create two parametric EQs found in studio effects. So control click, studio, studio effects, parametric EQ2. It's all the way at the bottom. Now what I'm going to do is hold down option, click and drag all the way to the right, let go of both options and we will have two parametric EQs. This is a lot better. This is almost as good as, I'm sorry, this is almost as great as our MC class equalizer. What this allows us to do is to save our CPU but still get the desired results. So for our, let me zoom in. For our filter frequency A, I'm gonna take this about 20. I would turn the Q mostly up, so about 80. I'm gonna do this for B as well, and turn the fil filter frequency to 94, and turn the Q up to 80. Okay, so for our A, we're going to for our type A, we're going to take the gain all the way down to negative 40. Same thing for B, take it down to negative 40. And make sure it's on. For our parametric E2 number 2, we're going to turn our filter frequency to 46. Turn the Q all the way up and the gain all the way down. For type filter B, we're going to change this to about filter frequency 90 take the Q all the way up and the gain all the way down. Now that we have this, we're going to create 
a pulverizer found in creative effects when you control click. And I'm actually going to choose a patch for this. You can either do this two ways. You can click in the menu here to bring up the browser, save you some CPU, or you can open the folder to browse manually. What I'm going to do is click inside of the box. I'm going to go to, where are you? Standard rotary and click that. That's already in place. We don't need to do anything else after that. Unfortunately, we do need to route our signal. So I'm going to control click, go to utilities and go to spider CV merger. After this, we're going to create a pulsar found in utilities. After this, we're going to go in studio effects, go to maximizer. And finally, right after maximizer, go to line six base amp. Make sure to turn off limiter, turn on soft clip, turn it to 127 and turn the release to auto on the maximizer. Make sure to turn on the compressor. And now for the more tricky part, I'm going to hit tab and flip it over. So when you write, when you create the spider CV merger, it will auto route this. We don't want that. So take the, just uh, take the cable where it stands and click and drag it anywhere else to get rid of it. What we want to do is create uh, is create a modulation for our EQs one and two. I'm going to rename this to two. We want to take our filter frequency two from both of them and plug them into our output of LF, LFO one on Pulsar. I want to change the level to about seventy three change the type to a triangle, and turn the rate to 1 8 Let's see, and that should do it. Let me make sure everything is routed. All right. Unfortunately, the line six base amp at the very bottom is not routed correctly. That's because when we created the copy of the parametric EQ, we didn't route it correctly. We need to take the output of the screen four into our EQ1, put it into the input of left and right, take the output of EQ2, I'm sorry, EQ1, and plug that into our input of EQ2, then take our EQ2 output and plug it into our input. And then at the bottom, you can either right click and do auto route auto route device or you can click and drag each cable up to our from devices. What this allows us to do it takes all of our signal that's routed to base to our very last base amp line six. We take that up to our combinator the combinator uh, routes itself to our channel mixer and there we have it. We have our patch. So now what, what we can do is take the dim negative 20 off, although it's recommended to still have it on when you're messing with your EQs, I'm sorry, messing with your synth. Because uh, if you're making this, let's say you want a synth for your new track, you want to turn this on so that way when you're playing around with keys and having the track run to listen to what keys you want to put into your notes, it's not going to blow your speakers, aka monitors. So there we go. Okay, so thanks for joining me on Monday. I'm going to give you a demo of what's to come for Wednesday. It's known as a transcord and I sidechained it so that way you can hear it. But mostly you hear this for a lot of dance and pop tracks. So have a listen.
So that's what's going to happen on Wednesday. Maybe, maybe not. But it's going to be interesting on Wednesday. Anyways, thanks for joining me, and I'll catch you guys Wednesday.